Hello everybody, this is Michael from the Board Games Chronicle. Today I would like to bring to you one more material regarding the successors, fourth edition from the Phalanx. What I would like to present to you today is a specific setup, a two-player scenario. In the playbook, yeah, you have a couple of scenarios for two, three, four, and five players, and today I will be playing First War of the Diadokai. Let me tell you a little more about this scenario. So we have two sides, as you can see, the green ones, uh, which is imperialist faction, and you have the black ones, which is reg regent faction. Uh, as we look at the map, we see that the green faction has already 18 points and it's like 11 points from the automatic victory. The black regent uh, faction has 14 points. Uh, the same thing is as far as the uh, legitimacy is concerned. It's uh, advantage of the uh, imperialistic faction over the re regent faction. Uh, the regent faction has at this moment in time uh, three generals. The imperialistic has two, Eumenes and Perdicas here, Elmens and Perdicas, while on the re regent faction side you have uh, Antigonus, you have Ptolemy, and you have also Antipater. Uh, you can see that the Ptolemy already managed to steal the tomb with the body of Alexander. On the other hand, Alexandros, so the infant son of Alexander the Great, is with Perdicas. So this is how the thing stands. Uh, it's important to note that the scenario will last only one turn, so five cards will be played and we finish it. Uh, there will be additional optional rules, so accelerated possibility to bury the body of Alexander the Great. Normally in turn one it was not possible. Uh, some of the cards were already played, some of the uh, um, factions of the neutral factions are already defeated, like here, uh, I think those are also defeated, and here, so this will not play. Um, from the other special uh, things, I think this is more or less everything. Now, let me move to the strategic uh, evaluation of this scenario. First and foremost, if the things finish like they are now, the green imperialistic faction will win. So it's on the black, uh, the regent faction, actually the pressure to change the status quo. First of all, you can see that they are pretty close of conquering Hellas. It's like only one place which has to be converted and it gives them six points. On the other hand, the imperialistic faction is close to Phrygia. Itself, it gives three points, but on top of this, we have uh, also this four points for master of the Asia, so Babylonia, Syria, and Phrygia in one hand. So, uh, most probably, there will be pretty interesting clash here. There is also one more strategy which could be deployed by the imperialistic faction. It's not so easy to move Perdicas from here to Phrygia due to, uh, let's say, movement restrictions of the mountains, but he can move against Egypt. And Egypt is six VPs for the um, uh, region faction. So this is also an idea. Uh, from the um, uh, forces perspective, of course, Perdicas is the largest one. It's, as you can see, a lot of them, I think. One, let me just correct one thing. No, oh, it's okay. He starts with 10. He starts with 10 units, so he will need to drop some of them uh, on the move uh, due to the fact that otherwise uh, he will suffer the attrition. Emmanuel has 4, uh, Antipater has 6, and those two generals have 3 and 4. Uh, let's see how the things will develop. Let me now start the scenario. Okay. 
So uh, we will be starting with scenario. Uh, first of all, preparation phase. Uh, what shall we do? We need to label the user pair. So player with a mozzy piece. So it will be imperialistic green faction. What uh, does it mean that they are user pair? If they are attacked by the black, uh, so the region faction, the region faction will not lose this legitimacy. But if the green attacks the black, they will lose this legitimacy. Uh, turn order, player with the least VPs, in this case, region faction will determine it. And I think they will give the first move definitely to the imperialistic faction. Why? Uh, because they would like to have the last move, last say in the game. One more thing, at the end of each round, we'll draw two cards from here, which could possibly uh, implement some random events on the map. In two-player games, this is how it's done. Okay, let's move on. There is no reinforcement phase. This is turn one. Uh, so what shall we do? We need to start, yeah? So we start from the imperialistic faction. There is nothing in a surrender segment. There are no ZGs, yeah? So we go to Taika segment. So we play one event. I will be just drawing from those two hands, nothing uh, subtle like choosing which is the best at this moment in time. Uh, I prepare to make sure that these are really interesting events here, plus some also reaction cards. Yeah, so while it's a demonstration of the flow, I wanted also to make sure that the cards which both sides have will be interesting. So, we start with the imperialistic faction. They play Asian Elephants, a pretty powerful card, which provides two elephants to them, and we should put it in the major city or with the army. I think I will put it with Eumenes, because he will have a task of taking Phrygia and repairing Antipater. So, yeah, this card is played by them. It goes to the discard. Uh, now, this was Taika segment. Activation segment. We'll roll a die, compare it yeah, with General's initiative rating and see how far they can move. So the roll is one, the, the worst roll. So both Generals can move, uh, utilize like two movement points. So I think... Uh, Eumenes goes here to the major city and Perdicas, it's not so obvious what he sh shall do, but I think this idea with hitting the Egypt is pretty interesting. Okay, so that was the activation segment. Uh, one more thing, we remember that he has as many as eight units so definitely he would like to leave two units with a minor general and this minor general could also move and we can move this minor general here yeah it's uh, or even farther using the um, naval path here and here we are safe in this transit point we have only two units it's really important to use with minor generals. From my observation, uh, they are key to the success. Uh, playing only with the major generals and losing some battles with them uh, makes things much more difficult for you. Uh, the minor generals, if you can spare some units, gives you more flexibility just even to take over some of the uh, lands. So this was the uh, Forage segment, and I think that's it. We now move to Regent Faction. They play, uh, first of all, there is nothing in Surrender segment. They play a uh, Tyke segment, the event, yeah. So what do they have? Major Campaign. Very good card, as far as movement is concerned. So we can activate up to two generals and all of them would have four movement points. Fantastic. 
So let's do it. I think the first one would be Antigonus. And uh, he will finalize the subjugation of the Hellas. We'll move here and here. This is two movement points, and he will use two movement points uh, to besiege. Let's see. Besiege table. Any roll uh, from free up will give him this, uh, this minor city. In order to besiege successfully the minor city, you need to uh, acquire one siege point. In order to conquer the stronghold, two conquest points. And in order to conquer the large city, three. Yep, he was successful. Five uh, on a on a zich table uh, is one conquest is one zich point so it's just being removed important note we do not place the token uh, we place token only in the if the zich is conducted uh, during the first phase the uh, surrender segment here we just remove it this is good now, uh, Antipatros has his eyes on uh, Hellespont victory points, yeah? so it's here. So he has four movement points, one, two, and he can move three, four. He can split a little, mm, he can utilize his minor general and put one mercenary to take over this province. It's slightly mm, risky because you see Eumenes has five, uh, six units now and can try to overrun this unit. But on the other hand, we have still Antipatros here uh, who can react. Uh, so this was the major campaign. Uh, actually, we would have also additional activation of the units, yes. So maybe we can do something more with this. No, there's not such need. Okay. Uh, so now, the activation segment, you never know how much we roll, so... Yeah. And we rolled poorly, so uh, Antigonus will have three movement points, all the rest of them only two. So Antigonus will move here and here. Uh, he will drop a minor general with one of his mercenaries. Yeah, here. And he will not move farther. I don't think that's wise. Uh, as far as uh, Ptolemy is concerned, that's a very good question. Mm. Perdiccas is coming, yeah, and he can move one, two, three, four here. So I think we'll try to block him and we'll stand here, over here. Anything more? No, we are fine here. No need for any sieges. This is fine. Okay, and uh, now we check the forage segment if we have enough uh, supplies. Yeah, we have enough supplies. So that will end the round one. Okay, guys, uh, let's continue with our game. Uh, one of the things which should happen before end of the round is drawing two random title cards and I forgot to do it. So let me do it now. We are looking for a special pattern here, which will tell us that it should be resolved as a part of this random card draw. No, there is no such pattern, so we just continue. So round two, uh, we go again. Uh, to the green part, so to the imperialistic faction. Uh, Zeges, from the Zeges perspective, they will take here the large city. Good. And uh, no, it was a transit point, so nothing here. So that will be for the Zeges. 
Now uh, we go further. Uh, take a segment. We play a card. The card will be major campaign. A uh, very good question. What shall we do now with this card? On one hand, we can push forward with Perdicas towards Egypt. But I have a better idea, which will put actually our uh, regent faction on the ropes. We can use those four points to place the political influence. And let's do it. If we put two green here in Phrygia, the control over this province will go to the green faction. Let's do it. Here is the province. Yeah, it's worth three points, but also that gives four points for the master of Asia. Uh, sorry, I already put it here. Yeah, when planning this. So this is seven points in total. It jumps to 25. Two more political points can be put in Persis, which will give another two points. What does it mean? That means that uh, the regent faction will definitely need to act quickly <coughs> and swiftly uh, in, in, in this situation. Uh, Persis, let me just get the Persis. I should have it somehow here. Yeah. And of course, this province goes here. Okay, uh, now activation phase. Uh, both leaders have free initiative rating, and both has have four movement points. So Perdicas move first. One, two, three, four. Uh, he will leave a minor general. Let me take it from here. And Perdicas. Mm. Here. Take over Anka. Good. For Eumenes. Eumenes should probably try to con control another set of provinces. So if he goes here, one, two, should be fine. And this minor general will come here. So it will be pretty close to controlling this uh, this, this, this province. Yeah, that's fine. Now, um, that's all for the activation segment. For action segment, uh, I don't think we have any problems. Seven units here, six units here. So there's enough supply. Now, the rigid faction. Uh, things are getting uh, difficult because uh, the spread of influence is, 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 is pretty quick. So what we can do? First of all, each segment. In each segment, the control over Mika Phrygia goes to them, and the control of Hellas, which is even more important. So both of those provinces. Hellas and Mika Phrygia goes to the Regent faction and it gives eight victory points. So, yeah, they are catching up, but as you can see, the imperialistic faction is pretty close from the automatic victory. Only two more points and some possibilities here, of course. Uh, what else? Uh, activation segment? No, before the activation segment, we'll have, of course, the Mm, card segment. Silver shields. I think without any hesitation we should take them. Very good event. This is the toughest unit in the game. Two units, each of them free strength. We should add a card which works against silver shields in the longer game. I would do it, but as we have only one turn, that doesn't make sense. Now, let's think where we would like to put them. That's a very good question. I think I will still put them with Antigonus. You see, uh, when you have a royal troops, 
and uh, royal bodyguards, they will not find against somebody who has a higher prestige. Prestige is a sum of a popularity of a general and legitimacy. At this moment in time, the legitimacy and popularity are you know, in the favor of the imperialistic faction. We'll try to change it, but we have not done it yet. So yeah, we will we'll need to work on this. For, for now, Antigonus will get it. He has also a higher battle rate. Uh, so now activation phase. Let's see how far they will go. Six. Everybody has four moves. That's a very good question. What shall we do here? Uh, for those generals, um, we have a minor general here. He would be able to move, of course, four. So, Antigonus. We need to strike against uh, the imperialistic forces. There is no other way to stop it, yeah? We go one, two, uh, three. We'll leave a minor general and four. And this way we'll leave those two units here in order to have a zitch. Okay, and he will stand here. This minor general will converge with Antigonus. One, two, three. Would a woman attack him? I don't think so. And it will converge with him, so Antigonus will get it. Okay, <clears throat> so Antipatros went against Phrygia. Antigonus is going toward Eumenes. We shall see what they will do in a moment. Uh, now, a forage segment, there should be no problem with the size of the armies. So we go to the final step of the round two. We draw two cards. Doesn't do anything, but that does. You see the symbol, it says it should be played. So user uh, unrest must be played for the event. Roll two dice and compare the roll to the unrest table. Uh, here we have unrest table. Let's roll. We rolled six. And six is track or appear. Track or appear. Appear is full of this. Uh, yeah. Here there is no problem with, with you know uh, putting additional neutral armies because everything is <laughs> occupied by the barbarians. So that went well. No side lost the control. Okay, we go to the further round, round three. It will be first of all the Zigis. And, and no, no more. the Zigis in Lycia Pamphylia lead, lead, lead yeah, to, to almost. Automatic victory, but not yet. Not yet, it's close, but not there yet. Uh, one thing which we could do with uh, uh, black, that is Regent Faction, at the end of the last turn is actually put here the tomb of Alexander. Let me do it now. Okay, let me put it here. This will increase legitimacy by two. Uh, for this, and yeah, this is the marker which will remind us about it. It's very important because, for example, now when Eumenes fights Antigonus, uh, they have pretty equal, um, pretty equal uh, prestige. So the army, royal army, will fight on both sides. Okay, that was what Eumenes did. Uh, now. Um, 
Uh, let's come back to the game. So uh, these were the Zigis. I think the Zigis are also here. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So the card has to wait. Okay, dog. And now, uh, now we have the Taika segment. Minor raid. Very interesting thing. What does it say? Remove one enemy PC from one minor city unoccupied by an enemy CUs. A minor city has to be within two movement points. And then after this event, we have still two points. So what we can do? Remove some marker. It could be from here. Uh, that actually means that the control of this province is lost. So two points go here. First of all, what we can do is put our green here and another green here. Yeah. Guys, I am maybe not playing optimally from a strategic perspective, but I would like to show you the whole flow of the game. Yeah. Uh, and now activation. Five, so everybody has maximum number of moves. I think Elmenes will go here. He will take those two guys to his army. He has eight of them now. We don't need this anymore. Okay, let's just check. Perdicus. He will attack. Definitely he will attack. Uh, Ptolemy. So first battle in our game, uh, Ptolemy has two units with a strength of six, plus local troops, control of province two, control of the uh, uh, place where the battle is taking place one, so in total nine. Perdicas has a lot. Uh, he has like uh, seven units, those contribute 10 and he has still elephants and as you know elephants are usually very very interesting now both sides have some battle cards and the black color will play this with anti-elephant devices so the strength of elephant will be minus two very good play and immediately uh, yeah, we'll draw a card in a moment for them zero so even without those special devices, it would be zero. The card goes here. Uh, fine. So uh, that went not fully according to the plan uh, for the uh, Perdicas. Now the situation is Perdicas has 10 strength, yeah, purely from the units, and the Ptolemy has eight, uh, nine strength. The battle rating for Perdicas is 3 and for Ptolemy is 4 in Egypt. Let's see what we'll get. I'm running for Perdicas as attacker. So this is changed to his battle rating, which changes to 3, so this is 9. So we cross check um, his uh, battle value. So strength, this is 10, and 9 is here, this is 7. So, he achieved, let's say, uh, combat strength of 7. Uh, because he rolled 9, we roll a die after battle, whether he will die or not. Now, uh, Ptolemy, battle strength 9, so 6. Both of those are changed, of course, to 4, so 8. And we cross-reference 8 and 9. This is 5. So, Ptolemy was pretty close uh, to, to defeating the Perdicas, but did not manage. Uh, let's roll for Perdicas. Uh, he won the battle, so only six will kill him, but still it can happen. No, so he survived. So, Ptolemy goes to Dispersed, out of his army. Uh, One more thing, I just want to make sure, yeah, because before the battle we should see whether those 
Royal Troops were fighting, the prestige for the Green is 9, the prestige for the um, Black is 7, but plus 2 popularity, yeah, so this is 9. Okay, everything was fine. So out of those units, the mercenaries will be disbanded, and the uh, Loyal Macedonians are dispersed. We roll for attrition, attrition table 2, 3, nothing. Okay, so it seems like the regent forces might not be able to pull out this. Uh, for our segment, nothing happens here. This is fine. Uh, by the way, we can move this minor general still in the previous turn. So now, uh, the each segment for the regent part. We convert those, which means that Phrygia is no longer controlled by the imperialistic faction. This is minus three for Phrygia and minus four for the Lord of Asia. So it goes to 20. We have a draw. Now, uh, that will be all. For this segment, we draw a card now. This will be unrest. So, again, another unrest. Let's roll on the unrest table. This is seven this time, and this means that it is Armenia. And roll again. I think Armenia is full of unrest already, so we just roll again. Seven. This is again Armenia. Two. Very interesting. Unrest to Persis or Zeus. Persis. So, oh, that's really, that's really fantastic. Let me just check if I can do it in major city. Yes. You know, Perdiccas was too far away, and there is a huge unrest in Zeus. But this is only one victory point, so the black player should actually do it that way. And this will unfortunately go down in the attrition phase. Nice, so Persis is lost. And for the first time, the Regent faction is in f ahead of the Imperialistic faction. Good, now the activation phase. Let's roll die and let's see what we get. Six, so all the generals have maximum um, value. Uh, let's do it that way. Let's move those generals to combine them. Um, this goes to anti Antipatros. Yeah. And having four move, he can remove it. Yeah. We should move this guy also in the past. Let me do it now. One. Two, three, four. Uh, by the way, in this segment, we also took over Halicarnassus, which is very good. It gives, first of all, uh, one point, but also the fleet. And the fleet is H. So this is Kai. Okay. So another fleet. It's already a huge fleet. And now, uh, what shall we do? I think Antigonus should attack. So he will do it. He will go one. And uh, Eumenes definitely would like to evade. And he did not manage. So we have a battle. Now, this time, uh, we don't have any royal troops. So yeah, there will be no card played by this side. If, if there was any uh, royal troops, the Imperialistic faction had in the past, yeah, the card for this. I think they will discard it next turn. So, Antigonus has 11 strength. Eumenes has two elephants and has eight basic. So that could be very close, but very interesting. Probably a battle which will decide the fate of the game. Fantastic roll. This is four. So, Eumenes has now 4, 6, 12, while Antigonus has 
11. 12, 12, 11. Both battle ratings are 4, the highest in the game. So this is a true clash of titans. Uh, historically, those two great generals met in uh, far away in the Iran. I can't pronounce the names of those two battles. I think Parten is at and Gabine. Yeah, like two huge battles. This time it's in Asia Minor. Still very, very interesting. Uh, rolling for the attacker, Antigonus, uh, with 11 strength. He rolls 9. Okay, because yeah, we increased the battle rating. So we look at the 11, 12. You see, this will be the same column for the both generals. One has 11, the other has 12, so this is 8. Battle rating, and let's see what will Elman do. This is the same 9. So, <clears throat> both, this is a draw. Both sides uh, uh, roll the same. One thing before we proceed further, we need to roll to see if generals uh, were not killed. In case of win or draw, 6 kills the general. Attacker, Antigonus, nothing. Defender, Elmanes, nothing, but close. So he moves back here, and uh, each side loses one uh, unit. So Elmanes will lose that one. Antigonus will lose that one. Very interesting part of the game. Really, truly, very, very interesting. Uh, from the activation perspective, uh, I think that will be everything. Forage uh, segment, everything is fine. Uh, I can't tell who will win this game. It's still uncertain, but very, very much interesting. But we, uh, we draw two cards, of course. Nothing here and nothing here. And we concluded the round three. Round four. Uh, we start the round four with the imperialistic faction. They will discard this battle card they don't need anymore. And they will draw this card. Let's see what's here. Influence spreads. Choose two minor cities unoccupied by enemies use adjacent to your PCs. Remove an enemy, including independent PCs, from those minor cities. Okay, so either we can do a flip, which would be really great, and we should probably do it. We will flip this one, fighting for this province, and this one, taking this province. As an event, a Caphrygia. Uh, of course, I forgot again to start with the Zich phase first, but yeah, we'll fix it. So, this is two victory points for the green ones. And for the Zijis, as far as they are concerned, Lycia Pamphylia will be now controlled by the imperialistic faction. Let me just see if I have her quickly. If, yeah. Dikia Pamphylia, so this is another two victory points, and Egypt is being turned. Mm -hmm. So now activation phase, with Egypt is a really vulnerable piece. Now. Uh, five, so both has four movement points, so what I will do with Perdicus, I will go here, uh, here, uh, one, Two, three, four to remove it. You see, this uh, token will be also removed in isolation phase. And let me just see if I have not. Uh, yeah, we should remove it in the isolation phase. No, it's at the end of the turn. Sorry, it will be at the end of the turn. So yeah, this is fine. What we should do with Elmenes? a very good question. He probably should attack. So we have another battle. Uh, this time uh, Elmenes will have an edge because he has 
Uh, yeah, let's roll for the elephant. Ah, uh, fantastic. 5, 9, 10, 12, plus 3 from local troops. Mm, 15. 15. And Antigonus will have uh, simply 10. 10 to 15, I think. No more victories for. Uh, for, for, for Antigonus. So, rolling for Eumenes. Fantastic roll. 10. Uh, strength 15, 7, 10 is 10. Result. And now Antigonus. 12! Oh my goodness. He had like 10. 10. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's again a draw. So both sides lose one unit. Okay. And this is still not decided. What a exciting game here. Simply, simply fantastic. Before the last turn. So let me move now uh, to the forage segment. Nothing there. So we quickly move to the black ones. Uh, first of all, is each face. This will be turned. And here we would have another influence, but still Phrygia is not controlled by anybody. It's 2-2 two, two now. Uh, event card. Cleopatra offers marriage. If you have at least one of your armies in the same location as an uncontrolled Cleopatra, I don't have at any time during the current game turn and no enemies use occupy her location unless they grant you free passage, she marries into your faction. I think that will be good. And for the free victory points, I think we'll use them to spread the influence. We need to do it. Uh, we should. Ah, here also was our Zich phase, so we should do it here. Should do it here and take Lydia. Lydia, which is two victory points. And uh, now, during uh, the phase, uh, the activation phase, uh, we have three, which means uh, four for Antigonus and three for uh, Antipatrus. And Antipatrus will go here and will marry with her, yeah. So we'll fix the uh, black black ring in a moment, but it's important that they are getting free loyalty. And uh, I don't think I, I want to do anything with Antigonus, but I would like this minor general bring him some more troops. Okay. Now uh, before our segment, everything is fine. Before moving to the last fifth round, let us see if we have yes, you have again the unrest. Let's see where it goes. Free. Free is Babylonia. So, of course, whoever has a smaller amount of points will decide where it should go. So, if it's green, I would put it here. Yeah. Okay, that concludes round four, round five, final one in a moment. Let's see what can be done. First of all, we start with the <coughs> green imperialistic faction, uh, the Zich phase. In a Zich phase, they will put here the control marker. Okay, and here we already have a control marker, good, fine, and that will be it for the siege phase. Now we move to the Tiger segment. Card, Diplomacy, that's interesting. Choose one, any one enemy controlled minor city not occupied by enemy seals, convert it to your control, remove enemy PC and place one of your own. Okay, so let's see where we can play it with diplomacy. 
it's minor CU. I think let's do something here, and that way uh, the regent function will lose Lydia, so we lose two points. Great, and uh, that will be it as far as uh, this title segment is concerned. Now the activation segment. In the activation segment, we got three which is free movement points for Perdicas. That's very important because it just allows him to move here and remove that control marker, which means Egyptos is now more controlled by the black ones, by the regent faction. And free for Eumenes. Uh, it's a good question if Eumenes can do something still. Uh, he will not be able probably to beat Antigonus anymore. He has 11 strength and he has 6. So, uh, rather not, unfortunately, nothing here. Uh, now to the uh, forage segment, nothing in this phase. Ah, let me move Alexandros with Perdica. Siege is nothing, I think uh, yeah. everything is fine here. Uh, by the way, forgot this, and this is very important. Here, one more point for Palestine to the imperialistic faction, of course. Uh, now, what can be done uh, by virgin faction? We are in pretty bad situation. We are like 23, 8. Eight points behind, and this is a huge, huge disadvantage. Um, let's see if anything can be done by this. First of all, card Olympias. <clears throat> Take control over Olympias. You may reposition her to an adjacent space. Place one mercenary CU for if she is in a Pyrrhus. Yes, she is in a Pyrrhus in her location if it's unoccupied by enemy CUs and. Generals. Would taking over the Olympias give us something? Not much. It moves us to 13, but we still miss like 5 legitimacy for the automatic victory, unfortunately. And this 5 is, of course, here, and we have no way to reach there. Uh, what else can we do? We could possibly try to convert some of the terrains, or we can activate one of the leaders uh, for the battle with four. No good choices for the regent faction. Truly no good choices. Okay, so we don't have much choices. We can't place the uh, political control markers. We don't have access here. Uh, we have, but it will be only one political marker. There are no other places from what I can see. Yeah, Everything is occupied now. We may try to remove uh, some of those, and I think this could be also a good idea. Uh, so, um, we will move anti Antigonos uh, or Antipatros. Antipatros, he will move four, first march, one, two, three, four, and remove this one. And now in activation phase, we hope to move farther. Three, not a good roll, so he can just move here and remove this. Still not enough to make a difference. Uh, shall we attack with Antigonus? That would be pretty, pretty difficult, but yeah, Let's see. We have so many draws, but uh, it would be good to see if we can finally pull some good results. So in last desperate attack, Antigonus is attacking Eumenes. Antigonus has uh, 10. Yep. And let's see how much Eumenes has. 
m minus will have much less than previously. We'll have 4, 8, 8 plus 1 for um, the local troops. So 9. Again, another very close combat. Here we have, as I told you, 9. So it's 9 to 9. Fantastic. Very equal battle once again. We roll for Elman S. It becomes 4, of course, due to his rating, so it's 8. It's who rolls higher, he wins. It's also 8, so it's 8-8. Eight, eight. So both sides lose 1. And it's another draw. It's truly astonishing how those two generals fight. And uh, that will finish activation segment. Now it has forage segment. Nothing happens here. And we have isolation. In isolation, that guys are removed. And in isolation, those guys are removed. Yeah. And other than that, no. Nothing happens here. Yeah. From this large city, it goes here. From the general, it goes here. So all other is fine. At this moment in time, we of course uh, check uh, the uh, victory. It's only one uh, one turn scenario. So as you can see, the imperialistic faction managed to pull a win. I think the critical to this win was the push of Perdiccas to Egyptus and also uh, a simply fantastic uh, performance from Eumenes uh, as a general. He managed to stop or draw uh, with, with Antigonus three times. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I also created uh, materials from the free players game, link to video below, but also the four player game. A traditional session report on my book. This is truly great game. I really like it and I hope that you will also have a lot of fun with it, just as I did. Thank you very much for today and take care. Bye.